Hey guys, it's Jordan here from Switch Watch with today's review of the Vasara collection. Let's see if this is a shmup classic or not. If you're unaware of what the Vasara games are, I don't blame you. I didn't know much about them until this collection release either. What they are were two shmups made for Japanese arcades in the very early 2000s with no console or western release as far as I'm aware. Until now that is. This collection, put together by Brazilian studio Cuba Interactive, includes Vasara 1 and 2 plus an all new timeless mode. Let's see how it is. There's not much of a story here as you would expect from an arcade shooter, but I do want to address the setting. It's set in feudal Japan in an alternative universe where sci-fi technology exists. Ieyasu Tokugawa's robotic hordes are trying to seek power and you, aboard your hoverboard, must thwart them. I love the ludicrous scenarios that Japanese shmups come up with. This one heavily reminds me of a couple of Saikyo shooters, Sengoku Blade and Sengoku Aces, also known as Tengai and Samurai Aces in the west, but yeah, you're not here for the story, right? The Vasara games are shooters that are erring towards a more hardcore audience, something you'd expect considering the arcade origins. But the mechanics and abilities are kept simple enough. You only have a few attacks, your standard shot which is what will be doing most of your killing. A second use for the same button is holding it down in order to perform a melee attack. Now this is easily the coolest part of the game since not only is it surprisingly powerful, but it can also destroy bullets heading your way. Obviously there's a huge risk versus reward decision going on here, but once you get used to it, it feels very good to do indeed. The wind up is a little long for my liking, but I suppose an instant attack would have made things a little bit too easy. Now I'm personally not a fan of two functions sharing the same button, even if it's intentional. Plus, for the sake of my fingers, I don't enjoy shooters that don't have an auto fire, especially the more furious types like this, but thankfully in this port, the buttons have been spread out so you can use auto fire with one button and then hold down another for the melee attack. You also have your panic bomb which will destroy all the minor enemies and heavily damage the big ones plus destroy many bullets that are around you, at least for the first game. Finally you have the Vasara attack which is pretty much your melee attack but when you've powered up your meter enough to make it even more deadly. In the second game this completely replaces the panic bomb but in return makes the attack quicker to load up and you can store three at a time instead of one. Oh my god these games are hard. Like really, really hard. Imagine the Strikers games from Psycho and then adding an extra layer of cruelty to it. There are a few difficulty levels, including an easy mode, which, if I'm being frank, they probably shouldn't have bothered since each setting seems to be equal amounts of pain. It's not much of a problem since you can just credit spam your way through the game, but that's not very rewarding at all. As I've said in other arcade reviews like Metal Slug, it just feels like you're failing your way through the game. I know difficulty is at the heart of the genre, but this is just spiteful. With the Psycho games, you can get your ass kicked of course, and they do have their moments of cruelty, but they felt learnable. Like you can take the time to get used to them. These two feel almost impossible at times, despite the fun that you can have. It does take the edge off it for me. The Sorrow 2 feels more manageable than the first, and that's the one that I enjoy spending the most time with. So yeah, you have the two original games, but the developers of this port wanted to go the extra mile by adding a completely new mode to the mix. Welcome to Timeless Mode. I'm not sure why it's called Timeless. I'm pretty sure that's the wrong wording on the part of the developers. Timeless generally means old stuff that's aged very well, you know, like a timeless classic. But this is certainly a brand new experience, there's nothing timeless about it. Perhaps Remix Mode might have been a better choice of a name, but I digress. Timeless Mode takes away the vertical nature of the screen, makes the gameplay area the full width of the TV, combines elements of both games together, adds a new art style and the ability for up to four players to play together, plus an extra ability. Oh, that's actually quite a lot. Now I just want to state that I'm 99% sure that this mode would be great with a few friends, but I only had the chance to play single player for this review, so keep that in mind. To be brutally honest, I didn't like this mode at first. The widescreen, slow movement and spread out enemies made it feel so sluggish in single player. The art style didn't help either, but more on that soon. But after playing all three games over a few times, I actually came to appreciate this mode a lot more, even though I knew it wasn't exactly designed for one player in mind. But the thing with timeless mode is that it's far more accessible to the player despite its strict rule set. 
It's still very difficult, in fact I still haven't got past stage 3. And yeah, I know I'm rubbish, but this mode is actually very learnable. You only have 3 lives, no continues at all, and unless you earn a 1-up, after 3 deaths it's back to the beginning. But every time I played, I learned and I got better thanks to the slower gameplay. What spurred me on even more was the online leaderboard. Sure, the other two games have them, but considering the lack of a standard rule set, they seem a bit mm, superfluous. With timeless mode, everyone is in the same boat, and seeing myself rise up the board amongst the admittedly low player count was nice to see, and I was determined to do even better. Although I'm sure about 32 seconds after this game is released to the masses, my score will be wiped off the board. Overall, of the three game modes available, I found most solace in Vasara 2 and the new timeless mode. I did have fun, although the inaccessible original arcade games left me a little bit frustrated despite me being a fan of these types of games. You really do need to be prepared for these games. You can have fun, just be ready to get some pain too. They're not quite up there with the best of Saikyo's efforts, but still commendable. The music for Vasara is actually pretty good. The original arcade games sport that traditional Japanese instrumentation, but ramped up to fit a hectic shooter. Think of the Okami battle music and you'll not be too far off. It matches the same tone as what we've seen before in Samurai Aces and the like, so it's nothing special, but it is very nice to listen to. The timeless mode matches it very well too. For me, I do like to turn the volume down on the voices and sound effects just a little so I can play with the music above everything else and I think that works wonders to enhance your experience. Visually, it's a game of two halves. The classics in themselves retain those retro sprites and visuals. It looks wonderful, although I'm a sucker for this visual style myself. I think they hold up very well compared to other retro shooters, although I can see them being a little out of date when they were first released. Not that that's an issue today. Then you have the timeless mode which has all new 3D graphics and if I'm being a little harsh, doesn't look very good at all. They're cheap and plasticky and take away a lot of the esteem from the game. Yeah, they look better in motion and while concentrating on the action, but from a spectator's viewpoint, they come across as quite poor. You do get accustomed to them though as you keep gunning for a high score, so the initial displeasure does go away eventually. It's worth noting that the two classic games are able to be played horizontally, of course, but with a lot of border artwork. But you can play the game in Tate's mode by rotating your Switch's screen 90 degrees if you've got a stand or a flip grip, or if you're mental enough like me, just turn your TV on its side and then you're cooking with gas. The Vasara collection is priced at $10 on the US eShop and £9 on the UK one, minus a penny. At that full price, I do think this collection is worth it. You compare the two classic games to what Hamster do or Zero Div do for their retro arcade ports, and this collection comes out very favourably. Plus, the quality is there too. But here's the real good stuff. If you pre-ordered the game, you will get 50% off, which, let's face it, is you robbing these people blind. If you're a shmup fan, you might as well pick it up. Even if you're a casual gamer, you might want to nab it at that price regardless. That's a bargain in my opinion. Of course, if you want to support ports like these, you might want to wait until it's full price to give a bit of a hand to the developers. I would. At $8.99, I'd buy the all day long to reward them for their efforts. There is a physical release planned for the Vasara collection. Unfortunately, it's been done by Strictly Limited Games, which is one of those limited run type jobs, except they're even more strict with their releases. Unlike Limited Run, where you have a pre-order period, Strictly Limited goes old school and only had a few thousand copies up for grabs. And if this is only just being brought to your attention now, well, it's too late. It's already sold out. It's over. Sorry about that. And yes, I was caught out too due to, you know, babies not really caring much about time-specific pre-orders. So I was pissed because I do love a good shmup, especially physically. But it looks like a dude online is willing to help me out with a spare copy that he ordered. So fingers crossed that will go through. Otherwise, I might have to head to eBay like some of you may. But, you know, not everyone has money to throw around. And there are a lot of budget gamers out there, which is why we have an extra code available to give away to you guys. For the first 24 hours of this video's publication, you can have a chance of winning a European download code for this very Vasara collection. I know some of you may have pre-ordered already, but you can always pass the code on to a friend, right? Then you can demolish their high score and gloat at them. All you have to do is follow me on Twitter at SoWhatAboutGame, Follow the developer of this GameCube by Interactive and also retweet a tweet that does not exist yet. But will do when this review goes live. I'll put a link in the description and pin comment as to where you can find it. 
I'll announce the winner over on Twitter. I know some of you guys don't like Twitter or don't have it, and I 100% understand that because it's a cesspit, but it does make giving things away for you guys a lot easier, so I hope you can understand. Overall, I think for the introductory sale price alone, the Visara collection is worth a purchase. Of course, it's Ultra hardcore gameplay may not be for everyone, especially with the original two games. The additional timeless mode might actually make it a cool party game for a slightly more casual audience, despite that not pulling any punches either. These games take a lot of patience, but in turn can be incredibly rewarding. For me, they don't top the quality of most of the Psycho games, but that leaderboard on timeless mode is very, very addictive. It's a nice little package, not the best out there, but still ones that shmup fans will want to pick up, a 7.5 out of 10. If you want to sample some more arcade shmups, then head over to watch my review of the Psycho Shooting Library Volume 1, 6 awesome shmups in one, most of which are better than this one. Well worth checking out if you enjoy the genre. Anyways, I'll see you guys over there, take care.